Good morning. After uh, demonstrating or uh, understanding the activity 6.1, how to, uh, what is the importance of the reward of fill in the photosynthetic process? Now we should uh, uh, study the importance of a stomata aperture and how does the stomata perform? Means uh, if we know that on the two surfaces of the leaf, the stomata are present. And these stomatal apertures perform two functions. One uh, is exchange of gases at the time of photosynthesis. The oxygen is uh, released and carbon dioxide is taken. And at, at the time of uh, photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken and oxygen is released. You have to know that uh, when the uh, root absorbs the water and minerals, and that water and minerals are pulled and uh, are conveyed transported to the apical part of the plants by the transpiratory pull, by the root pressure, yeah, by the suction pull. These are all the things which is studied later. We know that when this water and mineral reaches to the leaf, whatever the required amount of the water is utilized in the photosynthetic process. But the excess amount of the water, generally we talk about in the higher classes it has been written, written that 90% of the total absorbed water is waste water more than 90 percent and that is transpirated transpiration means that is the uh, release of excess amount of the water through the stomatal aperture that is called transpiration and this transpiration takes place through the minute aperture which is found on the surface of leaves which is called a stomata and this is stomata uh, if I'm, uh, I have drawn the figure of a stomata and I am showing you what is the figure of a stomata is like this. This is a stomata. You have to know that know this that uh, this is the guard cell. This is this is guard cell, and uh, this is subsidiary cell. This total is subsidiary cell and this dotted darkly dotted that is chloroplast and this is the nucleus of the guard cell this two are guard cell and this guard cell are surrounded by subsidiary cells you are looking here these are surrounded by subsidiary cells i have to say here when the water reaches to the stomatal aperture that is start to fill in the subsidiary cell here you look this is stomata this is a subsidiary cell which is surrounding the guard cell is filled by the water excess amount of the water and this uh, S2O not uh, uh, retain here but that to get uh, diffused inside the guard cell and this water this excess amount of the water apply pressure apply pressure over the wall of the guard cell not only over the wall of the guard cell but on the wall of the subsidiary cell this water which applying the pressure over the subsidiary cell wall and the guard cell wall which is called turgor pressure which is called turgor pressure the wall which is applied by the excess amount of the water over the wall of guard cell and over the wall of the subsidiary cell which is called turgor pressure or turgidity or turgidity and this turgidity causes the expansion this turgidity causes the shifting of this wall from this place to this place. Yani ki this wall, this guard cell, uh, that will that wall is here, that will shift slightly upward, so slightly outward. And this wall will shift slightly outward. That will cause expansion. And this expansion will cause opening of a stomatal aperture. So open and open a stomatal pore. This is called opening of a stomatal aperture and in this way stomata get open due to the turgor pressure and this turgor pressure is created by the filling of water inside the subsidiary cell and in the guard cell which is causing turgor pressure expansion in that walls and that leads to the opening of a stomata. After the transpiration when the sunlight will be there and this water vapors this water and yeah, excess amount of water will transpire through this open stomatal pore now this water will be lost here this water will now not available here again this wall which has expanded earlier will come into your previous position will back into their previous position will back to their 
previous position now shift to the original position and now again this is to matter which which has been widened here which has opened here for the transpiration now the water is not there turgidity is not there now that will shrink and shrink and come into the previous position and you can see this is the closure of stomata this is the closure of stomata so this is the mechanism of opening and closing of stomata and this opening and closing of stomata is done by water excess amount of the water another activity which we have to study today that is the activity 6.2 and this 6.2 is also referring to you that uh, uh, chlorophyll importance chlorophyll is necessary for the photosynthetic process and if chlorophyll is necessary for the photosynthetic process now this in this activity two potted plants uh, have been taken and this two potted plants uh, have been again kept into the dark room for 3 days you know uh, what is the purpose of placing the potted plants into the dark room you know that earlier this plant have photosynthesized and after the photosynthetic process the stored food material starts has been stored into the cells of the leaves and this uh, uh, starts will be utilized if the photosynthetic process is not going on in the dark room due to the absence of sunlight the stored food material starts will be utilized by the leaves and now in the leaves there is not a starts yeah starts is very less negligible starts amount is present now now you will uh, take out the plants two potted plants and keep into the uh, sunlight for 6 hours again and uh, you have to know that uh, one glass plate is there and on the glass plate you will set to this two potted plants and this two potted plants are covered by inverted bell jar i will show you the figure which is given as the figure 6.4 in the page number 97 that uh, this two potted plants are uh, covered by what is the inverted bell jar and the bottom of the inverted bell jar are packed by the uh, vaseline coating so that uh, air use air use of air inside the bell jar can be prevented because air will have the mixture of co2 which is the raw material of photosynthesis so, and the oxygen that will be a stop in this uh, experiment uh, we have to uh, so that the co2 will be not permitted to go inside the bell jar and that's why we will pack or seal the bottom of the bell jar previous to that what we have to perform that a conical flask we have to take yeah you can say wash glass and in that wash glass there is a a chemical compound which is known as potassium hydroxide which is kept inside that and it is uh, uh, known to all that this pot potassium hydroxide is absorber of the carbon dioxide suppose if you have kept two bell jars bell jar 1 and bell jar 2 and in which two potted plants are there uh, uh, potted plant a and potted plant b in the potted plant a you have kept the Uh, watch glass having the potassium hydroxide and its nature is the carbon dioxide absorber so it will absorb the carbon dioxide and uh, we have kept this potted plant in those sunlight for 6 hours and during which in the potted plant a we have kept the potassium hydroxide watch glass and uh, what will happen your bottom has been uh, packed or sealed so that uh, outer air cannot reuse inside the bell jar so what the respiratory process will be performed by the plant body and after the respiration what the co2 amount will be released that co2 in the case of potted plant a will be absorbed by potassium hydroxide so if one raw material which is the carbon dioxide and which is uh, absorbed by the potassium hydroxide then the one raw material is absent for the photosynthetic process but in the case of bell jar b no koh has been placed no potassium hydroxide has been placed no absorption of the carbon dioxide will be there so what the amount of carbon dioxide which is present inside the bell jar and which is the by product of the respiration in the bell jar b potted plant that will be utilized in the photosynthetic process so in bell jar b photosynthesis will take place but in the bell jar a photosynthesis will not take place due to the lack of co2 now uh, after uh, keeping this plant for 6 hours in the sunlight we will take the plant out and we will pluck one and one one leaf from uh, this two potted plants and we will uh, repeat the activity 6.1 we will repeat the uh, activity 6.1 we will uh, what we will take this two leaves from one, one from potted plant a and one from potted plant b and this will be uh, boiled in the water 
after boiling uh, this leaves into the water you know that why boiling is done because the because for the uh, softening of the cell wall and cell membrane of this two uh, leaves because uh, cuticle can be softened and the cell wall can be softened so that in the further way iodine solution can be mixed easily after the boiling this two leaves into the be uh, into the water now this two leaves are taken and that will be kept in two beakers having the alcohol and this alcohol containing beakers now placed inside the water bath and will be indirectly heated as you know that why these two beakers having the alcohol and having this boiled leaves are indirectly heated because alcohol is highly inflammable so now the lips will be placed inside the alcohol containing beakers and these two beakers are differently or separately placed inside the water bath and will be heated and will be uh, now these two lips uh, after getting heated inside the alcohol now kept out and this will be immersed into the iodine solution and when we will wash it you know that the leaf which is immersed into the iodine solution and which is taken from the potted plant a will have not any uh, color change from uh, greenish color a light green color to blue black color and uh, potted plant b uh, as the photosynthetic process has performed as the glucose formation has taken place as the stored starch has been there uh, so that starch will uh, react with the iodine and there will be uh, a conversion of color from uh, light green color to the blue black dark uh, blue black color change will be there so this repeated 6.1 activity will be repeated in this case and it is shown that uh, in the photosynthetic process water plant b has photosynthesized a starch has formed that's why there is a color change due to the immersion of that uh, boiled leaf into the iodine solution but in the leaf which has been plucked from the potted plant A, as the CO2 was absorbed by the potassium hydroxide, there was not photosynthesis, there was not glucose formation, there was not a storage of stars, and there was when that was immersed into the iodine solution, there is not change in the color, and that's why we can say that chlorophyll is uh, necessitated for the photosynthetic process, as well as if the raw material is not there, then the photosynthetic process cannot happen in the absence of CO2, yeah, in the absence of water, yeah, in the absence of all the appropriate raw materials. Thank you.